Hi everyone, me again. I wanted to share with you one of the great pleasures of living in a metropolitan area. Uh, Los Angeles has several museums and currently the Skirball has an exhibition on Rudy Gernreich. Rudy was an avant-garde designer and he pushed the boundaries on so many levels. This is an example of a Gernreich ensemble that never made it to the runway. He calls this his Marlena Dietrich ensemble and it was um, a way to kind of blur the gender lines in fashion. Gernreich also did a Ringo suit and a um, George Sands suit. So uh, there were several muses in his collection. His evolution into becoming the fashion designer that we now respect uh, was one that went through many different segues. Uh, he worked for Mortician, uh, he worked as a sketch illustrator for Hattie Carnegie and uh, one other designer. And um, because he started working with a fabric mill, um, and he was interested in fashion as a young man, uh, he began to create bathing suits that were unstructured without any foundation. And that was really the beginning of his journey into creating the um, mega fashion star that he became. Uh, we have on the mannequin a really beautiful double knit wool uh, dress that is almost a variation of the kabuki dress that he is so well known for. This is another signature dress for, for Gernreich. It's called the kabuki dress. And you can see he drew his inspiration from the Japanese kabuki garment. Uh, what he did was he raised the waistband higher, made it more relevant to fashions of the day. Interestingly enough, this is from 1963. So he was really ahead of his time. Um, he collaborated with Harmon Knitwear, which I believe was in the Midwest. And uh, these four items are actually all items that were uh, Rudy Gernreich in collaboration with Harmon Knitwear. What I love about um, his pieces is he was absolutely um, a social revolutionary. He believed that in the future, men and women would be dressing alike. It would be unisex. He was for the Equal Rights Amendment. He was against the anti. Uh, he was uh, against the Vietnam War, and uh, his clothing reflected his political opinions. Um, none of these pieces actually do that. But if you have the good fortune of exhibiting the skirball before the show comes down, you will see in full view how he uh, expressed himself with fashion. Rudy Gernreich was really um, an amazing designer because he, a lot of his designs were socially minded. And you have to think back to the time of the 60s when um, the Vietnam War, there was so much going on. And these two pieces are examples of um, a form of protest. Kent State University happened. And <clears throat> you can see by the um, labeling that Gernreich designed military-inspired clothing in protest of the Vietnam War. And um, the piece next to it is a Nehru ensemble, which was inspired by uh, India's first prime minister, whose last name is Nehru. And uh, there was a whole um, movement, really, around the world to shed light on the global community. So that's a great example. Rudy Gernreich for really contributing to freedom for women in clothing. Uh, this great quote, it, it was not just free the, for the body, it freed the spirit as well. So things that he did was he created um, undergarments that were not as restrictive, and of course his uh, infamous topless bathing suit. Um, this is an example of some of his more tame uh, swimwear with the orange one being an example of the topless. Uh, and they go back as early as the 1950s. And 
what's great about this is you can really see how he deconstructed what was considered normal. Um, what I find really uncomfortable is most of these are wool um, with collaboration of Harmon Knitwear. I'm not so sure I'd want to wear a wool bathing suit into the water. So. Talk about fashion forward. This swimsuit was done in 1971. It is uh, very reminiscent of Mondrian and it is also made of wool. Rudy Gernreich was a very important part of the 60s youth quake. His whole reason for liberating women with you know, foundations and with bathing suits uh, was not to sexualize them, but to liberate them. And uh, I believe that he was very successful in his ways. Um, what I love about this one is it is an unstructured swimsuit. It is wool, which I just can't even imagine. Um, but his contrasting uh, of geometric shapes was something that he did quite often. And um, yeah, so you can see that in this example and also in this example, which has three different checks. Um, very comfortable, very, I mean, you could wear this today. Uh, in 1963, 64, Look Magazine asked him to come up with um, a swimsuit. And that is when he created the outrageous monokini, which is a topless bathing suit. They photographed it from the back. And believe it or not, over 3,000 of those swimsuits sold. And I can guarantee you that probably 90% of them were never worn. Uh, I ha actually had the good fortune of buying a few that were pristine because they were never worn. Um, this is also a great example of his using uh, geometric shapes. This is a polyester knit, and um, unbelievably, I actually acquired this last week. Um, so it hasn't had a chance to go to the dry cleaners, but I love how um, playful this is. So Grimreich collaborated with Harmon Knitwear, and uh, this rack of clothing is uh, from the collection of Peggy Moffat, who is and was um, Grimreich's muse. Uh, what I love about this rack is it shows his colorful styles, as well as his things are a little bit more conservative, with heavy wools, which are from uh, the 1960s, probably ni very early 1960s. I actually had a piece that was a gorgeous cropped uh, tweed jacket with a skirt that had um, three or four t ruffled tiers, um, and it had fabric that's very similar to that wool, um, but just beautiful and so uh, visually appealing. This piece is not uh, Rudy Gernreich, but his muse was a model named Peggy Moffat, and Rudy collaborated with um, Vidal Sassoon, so a lot of his models had these super uh, futuristic haircuts. And Peggy Moffat made a name for herself because of her haircut and her makeup, but also because she was, you know, his muse. Um, and down the road, Peggy did a collection of um, clothing for Come de Garçon, and this is one of the pieces. It's um, a wool top with pants. And the last piece I have on the rack is Rudy's background was in dance, and you can see so much of his philosophy had to do with freedom and freedom of movement. And uh, this is a leotard, believe it or not, that was made by Rudy Gernreich for Capizio. Rudy Gernreich's collaboration with Peggy Moffat was a natural fit because um, Peggy came from a dance background and their work together resulted in some very innovative things like fashion films, which 
to think about the fact that they did that as long ago as they did. They really kind of um, created a path for a lot of other designers. Rudy and his partner Walter Bass and one other person started a boutique called Jax. That's J-A-X. And if you ever find a Jax piece, their lettering goes on the vertical versus the horizontal. Jax was a favorite among uh, stars like Audrey Hepburn and Marilyn Monroe. And uh, they actually bought um, several of Rudy Gernreich's uh, knitwear. It's very difficult to not comment on the extreme parallels between the 60s and today, long before LGBTQ was part of our vernacular. Rudy Gernreich uh, co-founded an organization called the Mattachine Society, and their whole purpose was um, they focused on uh, gay rights and the advocacy for um, people in need of legal assistance. I mean, you can imagine in the 60s before today, I mean, today things are difficult enough as it is, but in the 60s, um, everybody was pretty much discriminated against. And so God bless Rudy for beginning the process of equal rights for everyone. So on that note, you know, you see the relevance of fashion and society and uh, we're going to call it a wrap for today. And we appreciate you watching our episodes. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, I think our next episode will be also a social statement of how fashion is impacted by war and peace. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.